welcome to a brief devotional together as we spend a little time in the Word of God and seek the heart and the face and the mind and the will of our Heavenly Father. Uh, we're working our way through the letter of Philippians, a letter written by Paul to believers in a town called Philippi. And it's an overwhelming and a consistently joyful letter. Granted, it is filled with uh, encouragements and challenges and uh, raw realities, but the heart of this letter is to encourage you and me and everyone who would be a follower of Jesus Christ. I hope and pray that you are encouraged by these lessons together, by these studies, by these reflections and meditations each morning. I'd love to hear from you. Please let me know uh, what what the way the ways in which God is blessing you or teaching you or growing you through these times. Let's pray. We're going to get into Philippians chapter 1. We're going to look at verses 29 and 30 of Philippians 1 today. Let's pray. Lord, how great you are. And that's not a question. That is a statement. You are beyond comparison in your greatness and in your glory and your purpose, your design, your will. And it is unhindered and unthwarted. Have your way and achieve and accomplish your will in us and through us for your glory and our good, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Philippians chapter 1, verse 29. For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ, you should not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake engaged in the same conflict that you saw I had and now hear that I still have. There is an error, there is a false belief and an inaccurate conclusion that is afoot in the church and it's something that is relatively new, it's relatively recent, it, it, it is this that to be a follower of Jesus means that life gets easier and becomes increasingly problem-free. That's just not true. As a matter of fact, to be a follower of Jesus throughout most of history, and therefore probably the prevailing truth is that to become a follower of Jesus means that life actually might get more difficult for us. Paul is highlighting this very clearly, and, and he's not saying that because it gets more difficult that life becomes less enjoyable, or that there is less peace, or less hope, or less love, or less passion. As a matter of fact, Paul will say that because life is riddled with problems as followers of Jesus, life becomes better. This is this is the great flip. This is the great reversal that, that as we live our lives day to day without Jesus and we try to make our lives filled with comforts and pleasures and, and enjoyments and life is actually harder in the long run because we lack the joy and the hope and the peace and the love we long for. It is found in Christ. And it will mean in many ways, challenges, impediments, difficulties, hardships in this life. That's what Paul is saying. For it has been granted to you. This, is, this is, means that God has gifted and purposed and planned and intended for our lives this. It's been granted to you that for the sake of Christ, who is our life. Paul says, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain in Philippians 1.21. That for the sake of Christ, you should not only believe in him, which is the anchor, which is the, the heart and the basis of all that we are, but also suffer for his sake. To know Jesus, to love Jesus, to be in a relationship with Jesus means that our lives will be characterized by everything his life was characterized. And this is intimacy with the Father. This is knowledge and understanding of the intentions of the covenants and the law, the word of God. 
It means investing in loving our neighbors and the nations. But it also means to be despised and rejected. It also means to be uh, riddled with problems and difficulties in our lives. He says that you will not only believe in him, but suffer for his sake. Engaged, as Paul says, and Paul's not saying this is this is your experience, not mine. Paul says, engaged in the same conflict that you saw I had. Paul's saying, this is my life, and my life is indicative of everyone's life as a follower of Jesus. The conflict that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. Friends, I, I don't want us to throw in the towel or shy away from following Jesus just because of the reality of hardship. The fact is, every single person, regardless of their faith in or rejection of Jesus, regardless of whether they have a relationship that is close or a relationship of distance with the living God, all of us have difficulties. The problem is, and the distinction is this, a believer in Jesus has the resources and is equipped to live through those difficulties with hope and faith and joy and the love of God. And those that do not know Jesus are left grappling for their own manufactured and in the end disappointing efforts at joy and hope and peace and love trust Jesus. Know that that might mean life gets hard at times, but it's worth it. It's worth it because Christ Jesus will never, ever let you go. Even in the darkest hour, his hand holds you fast. He will hold me fast. Lord be with you and bless you and comfort you with this assurance. I'll see you again tomorrow.